Hi everyone! So at the end of last year, I don't know if you saw this video that I made for YouTube, but it was the No Makeup Makeup Look, the Victorian edition. And it really was describing that almost quite traditional Victorian look. But today I want to expand on that. So I want to talk a little bit more about that, but also I want to show you the alternative Victorian makeup look. And this was something which was quite secretive. It was called enameling and most of this is going to be shot on location so it's from my documentary series because the recipe that I needed to make to enamel was quite challenging and definitely required a chemist. There's something incredibly understated about Victorian beauties. Their clothes may be big and silky but their faces don't match. It was a far cry from today's makeup counters, of course, but pharmacists sold products like cold cream, claiming their medicinal properties. And upmarket perfumers like Floris in Mayfair offered creams and powders alongside perfume. There were also some salons where makeup treatments were on offer, including one in Bond Street, owned by a notorious Victorian beautician, Madame Rachel. And she certainly captured the public's imagination. Firstly, she was selling full-on cosmetics, so none of this soaps, fragrances. She was selling rouge, lipstick. And this was all sold with some pretty aggressive marketing. Listen to one of her adverts. How frequently we find that a slight blemish on the face, otherwise divinely beautiful, has occasioned a sad and solitary life of celibacy, unloved, unblessed, and ultimately unwept and unremembered. Whew, I mean, she's really playing to women's insecurities here, and she's getting away with it. Scores of articles appeared about Madame Rachel in the Times, and she was eventually imprisoned for fraud. Once again, the use of cosmetics was being linked with crime, gossip, and a lack of respectability. One of the services that Madame Rachel offered was something called enamelling. And just when you thought the Victorians couldn't get any weirder, this was a counter trend completely opposite to the popular natural look. It wasn't anything like nail enamel. It was quite a heavy makeup look, a little bit like an Instagram filter. It was supposed to give you this flawless look that would almost fill in all of your wrinkles and take years off. It was a very expensive treatment to have, the equivalent of thousands of pounds in today's money, and it was hush-hush. Like cosmetic surgery today, you wouldn't want to advertise that you'd had it done. Because of this, Visual evidence of it is hard to find. But in the 1880s, a Parisian socialite became the poster girl for the enameled look. She was called Virginie Goutreau and was immortalized by artist John Singer Sargent and Gustave Coutois. I've come across a recipe in a practical guide for the perfumer from 1868 for something called pearl white, which I'm hoping will produce the enameled look. I've asked Sue to help. So this is Virginie Gautreau, and she was also known as Madame X. And you can see she's almost like a pearl. Yeah. <laughs> it's extraordinary. Here on this one, you can see as well a lot of the texture of her skin, her real skin showing through, round her eyes and her ears obviously aren't painted. So you get this sense of her really being a painted lady. I would love to see how this recipe looks in real life. Sue's recreating a face enamel from the 1860s, starting with the metal, bismuth. The bismuth powder is then added to concentrated nitric acid. and a layer of white pigment is formed when it's added to water. Bismuth whites were known as pearl white because they're slightly pearlescent. And this is the resultant pigment that we actually harvest out. 
Wow, that is really luminous white. The first thing that we actually need is the cold cream that we made earlier. Oh, nice. Yeah. If there's pigments around yes. and palette knives, I just need to be involved. Fair enough. <laughs> can Fair I have enough. a go, please? You can. Oh, yeah, it's quite firm, isn't it? Oh, yes. If we don't add any more cold cream, mm -hmm. I'm imagining that with a brush, actually, it might be a more natural look on the skin. Mm -hmm. Just imagine it sort of brushed on. Ooh. You see, you can get quite a natural effect. Indeed. It looks quite nice, actually. It does look quite nice. So, considering this treatment was supposed to last for several weeks. I'm not sure how you kept your makeup on that long, but maybe they just didn't wash their faces. When I rub it, this one feels like it's set and it's not going to go anywhere. And it's almost like this idea of polyfiller, the way it's described as being applied. Then they would have applied rouge, the lips and the cheeks. Mm -hmm. And then to finish it off, they would then paint on some fake blue veins. Well, I did manage to follow the recipe. So that is the blue vein pencil. Indeed. Which looks like a blue vein itself. <laughs> yes, it does, doesn't it? So I'm going to use some modern day enamel. It's not that dissimilar, really, look. Yeah. So if you can imagine that all over the face, all over the neck, all exposed skin. And then, because it's on my hands, I've got my veins there already. I'm just going to breathe on it, as they breathe. say in the recipe book. Hmm, <sighs> it's pretty. Not much give in this. No. OK, let's have a go. I'm going to go over the top. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, wow. It does show. It does. Look at my veiny, veiny hands. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. That's quite realistic. Yeah. So many books contain cautionary tales about pearl white makeup, mainly centred around the fear of being discovered wearing it, because apparently bismuth could change colour. There are several versions of this story, but one goes that a young woman is attending a chemistry lecture when a bottle of water containing some hydrogen sulphide is passed around. This was commonly known as Harrogate water and was being sold as a therapeutic mineral water. It was very popular at the time. She takes a sniff, actually smells like rotten eggs, and then I quote, she becomes suddenly black in the face as her makeup reacts with the sulphur in the water. Not only is she revealed as a fraud and hugely embarrassed, but this serves as a lesson to rely more on mental than personal and artificial beauty in the future. So I'm going to attempt to enamel my face. I just want to see what it looks like close up. Most of the documentation talks about depilation before the foundation went on, using alkaline washes. And they would have taken away all of the fine hairs from the face, but also would have acted a bit like a modern day peel. And then there was face shaving and tweezing. So I'm going to start layering it on. Had I just had some hair removing treatment, my skin would be looking pretty plump and smooth. So that element in itself, I think, would make a huge difference. Next would be the red element. So it's all about painting your face red and white, really. So I'm going to start with lipstick. This, again, was supposed to look natural, but obviously it really doesn't, especially against the white, ghostly white skin. The blush was pretty florid in the portraits we see. It was supposed to, again, look like this natural, youthful flush. So maybe even a little down onto the jawline, maybe, or sometimes onto the ears. Now, I'm sure once that was done, everything was powdered into place. OK, now for the pièce de résistance, which is the blue vein pencil. I'm going to have to blend them in a touch. Kind of works. If you're a lady of advancing years and maybe you'd been a big society beauty, having something like this done would almost give you the courage and the confidence, maybe, to go out at night feeling that you looked fresh and young. I'm not against it. I just think probably in daylight this wouldn't look 
very good at all. And it's just so interesting that this amount of makeup, which even by today's standard is quite a lot, was part of a culture in which only natural beauty was acceptable. It strikes me that this extreme enamelling actually tells us everything we need to know about Victorian beauty. Only the very young and lucky could have the naturally perfect look that the age idealised. For everyone else, brilliant science and ruthless marketing stepped in with products to replicate it. But God forbid you actually got caught using any of them. <laughs> <laughs>